doing tonight? Man, isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Can we all stand together? And I want to do something really, really crazy. I know it's it's gonna require some some comfort zone to be shattered, but can we can we be a family tonight? I know there, there's less of us here this morning than there is on a usual Sunday, but can we make our way into these middle rows? We're just gonna spend some time as the family of Christ tonight, worshiping Him together. Thank you guys so much. Man, who's ready to run into the throne room tonight? Who's ready to magnify his holy name because he is worthy of all of our praise? Man. So before the band comes up, we're uh, we're just going to strip it down a little bit. We're just going to refocus. I mean, sometimes we can we can get very caught up with all the, the lights and sounds, and we don't have a lot of lights. This is just it. But even still, let's just take some time and refocus, magnify the Lord, bring him to the forefront of our minds, and let's worship the Lord together. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, and we'll invite the Lord here. Father, we love you. Lord, we invite you here as the guest of honor, Lord. You're high and mighty to be praised. You're above all names. Lord, you hold all of creation in the palm of your hand, Lord. Lord, there is no one like you. Lord, we've come in expectation, knowing that you're right here, right now, Lord, as we invite you. Lord, we're drawing near. We're pressing into your throne room. God, we pray for your presence to be here. God, we magnify you and you alone. We pray that you would bless this night. God, we pray that you would receive your praise from your saints tonight. And from everyone joining us online as well, Lord. God, may we sing as as the, the, the family of Christ. God, we love you. We love you, Lord. stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart come on let's sing it out i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, Lord, it's all about you, Jesus. Lord, it's always been about you. King of endless work. this word no one could express how much you deserve and though I'm weak and poor all I have is yours every single breath I'll bring you more than a song I'll bring you more than a song for a song is not what you have required oh, you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart so I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, when it's all about you, Jesus. 
Yeah. 
just as I am Empty handed but alive in your hands We're singing majesty Majesty Ever I am changed by your of your majesty we're singing majesty majesty your grace your grace is found me just as I am empty handed but to lift up your name on high, the name that is above all names, where there is no one like you, none in the earth. No one can match your power, your grace, your might. But we've come, Lord, to magnify you today as your children. We pray that you would be blessed as we continue to, to sing your praises together. In Jesus' mighty name, we all prayed. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody, to our worship night. It's a night of worship. And um, man, it's just going to be a time of sitting in the, in the throne room, sitting at the feet of the Lord together. And uh, we've got, we've got a, a message a little later as well, but um, we're just going to start um, just with more songs of praise and adoration, and we're going to run to the throne room together. Amen. And so um, with that, let's, uh, let's continue to praise the Lord, and feel free to keep standing, sitting, however the Lord is leading you to, to worship this night, and this, this should be a, a place of freedom. So if it's like the Lord just wants you to, to stand and, and lift up holy hands and surrender and praise, go for it. If you just need to sit and be still and know that he is God, go for it. Amen. Because worship always looks different. It's always the heart. Man looks at the outer appearance, but the Lord discerns the heart. Amen. Amen. But if, if you want to worship expressively and the Lord is leading you to, to, to lift your hands and, and bear with me do one of these, you know, sway a little bit, go for it, you know, like David danced before the Lord, amen, and so this should be a place of freedom, we're dancing, we're singing, we're celebrating the name of Jesus together, amen, amen, let's all sing, the, sing this next song together.
Jesus. Come on, let's sing that together. Jesus, whether out loud or in the quietness of your heart, say, Jesus, I love you. There's no one like you. Be glorified, Lord.
song forever and amen and the angels holy our creation
Y'all may be seated. We've got a video for you guys. God is good. Amen. Amen. Not all the time. God is good. All right. Man, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. If we haven't met, my name is Brian. I get the, uh, the honor and privilege of being the worship director here at Calvary Chapel of Greer. And man, it is, uh, it's, been a, it's been a great night in his presence. Amen. And so, um, man, all right, let's, uh, let's get into it. Well, we've got a, uh, a quick word for you guys. And uh, just praying praying over what what the lord wanted to 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 speak tonight and and after about like five or six different passages the lord brought me back uh in calvary fashion just to continue the course <laughs> so we're going to be pretty much where we left off uh last last wednesday and it just ties in so so well so with that let me see your bibles if we can put these in the air wave them like you just don't care if you guys have an app, you guys can put your phones up as well. We don't discriminate. It's okay. I use my app as well. It's okay. You know, it's the word of God, right? And so, um, yeah, man. So let's open up to First Chronicles chapter 16 as we get started. And um, when you're there, you can say word. Word. Amen. We used to do that. Uh, what is it? High school, uh, young adults. We used to just say word. So it's, it sticks. Amen. Well, um. Well, let's pray together, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll dive on in. All right, Father, we just thank you so much that we could be in your presence, that we could spend all this time just magnifying your name and giving you the honor, the glory, the praise. Lord, we lift up the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, I pray that you would anoint my lips to speak what you have to say, Lord, tonight to your church. Father, I, I love you. I praise you. I pray that, that these would be your words and not mine. And Lord, anything that, that isn't of you, I just pray that it would fall on deaf ears, that, that it wouldn't even be remembered. Lord, but we, we've come to, to hear from you tonight and to, to magnify your name. So what do you want to say? Lord, we pray that you would open our ears in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so just with a, a quick recap. So we're going to recap a little bit just for context, see where we're at. We're going to go from uh, chapters 11 to 15, uh, but we're going to be in chapter 16 uh, verse four tonight, but just for for some context, let's see what we've been we we what we've been studying um, together as we've been going through First Chronicles sixteen, actually First Chronicles in general. Um, but really quick, man, hasn't hasn't uh, Pastor Randy been doing such a great job in in this book so far? Amen. Yeah, he has. 
he has. And him and his, his lovely wife are, are getting some much needed rest and relaxation right now. So Pastor Randy, if you're watching us right now or later in the future, we want to say that we love you. We miss you guys and we, we pray that you guys are getting tons of rest and relaxation right now. Um, and so uh, with that, let's, let's recap really quick just for context because we're all about context. We're a, a Bible reading, Bible believing church, amen. And so that's what we're going to do. And so let's recap what, what's been going on with David. We've got, we see in chapter 11, David was anointed king. And as Pastor Randy said last week, in just seven short years, he was then the king over a united Israel. And that's just a, such a huge deal, amen. And so uh, leading after that, he, he suffers a major failure. And uh, three months later, after searching the scriptures, the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant is brought to Jerusalem. And that's just a, 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 a glorious thing. And that's what we're going to be studying and looking at a little bit tonight. And so, uh, but just to, to, to dive in a little bit, um, let's look at chapter 15, starting on, on verse 13. Um, we see that David's repented. And, and as Pastor Randy told us last week, he decided to do God's things God's way. Amen. And so that's such a good thing that, uh, that when God has prescribed something, we have to do it his way. So many times we, um, we, uh, we fall short and we do things in our own strength and it just falls flat, right? So I just love that, that David was always one, a man that repented and ran back to the Lord and did things the, the Lord's way. And so let's start on verse 13. It's up on the, the screen. Um, and, uh, and he says, because, and he's talking to the, uh, the, the leaders of, of the Levites at this moment. Um, he says, because you did not carry, carry it first, and he's talking about the Ark of the Covenant, the Lord our God broke out against us because we did not seek him according to the rule. And I'm reading out of the ESV tonight. It's just the Bible that I have. And so, just, um, but uh, we'll be in there just for, for clarification. Um, but everything's on, on the, going to be on the screen for you guys. And so, so they didn't do things God's way. And uh, so let's see what happened, you know. And so uh, we see in chapter 13, right here, that um, they were supposed to carry in the ark on their shoulders through the, those poles that were made of acacia wood, right? As prescribed uh, to Moses by the Lord. Um, but they didn't do that. Instead, they decided that they were going to carry it in on a cart like the Philistines, right? And then what happened? The ox uh, stumbled. And then, uh, where is he? Um, was it Uzzah extended his hand? And then what happened? <laughs> as, as, they would, as we would say in my house, uh, he was unalived. And so um, <laughs> we've, we've got two little ones at home, so we're, we're careful with the, the words that we use, and we want to share things in due time. But, um, but yeah, so he got, un, he got unalived, you know. And sometimes... Um, Man, in other words, they, they leaned on their own understanding and the consequences were deadly. And uh, isn't that true in, in our life? Like maybe not deadly, like heaven forbid, but like sometimes we get ourselves in a pickle, right? And so, um, but that just reminded me of uh, Proverbs 14. Uh, no, yeah, fourteen twelve. it's on the, the screen for you guys. And it says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but in its end uh, is the way to death. And uh, we need to seek the Lord Amen. We need to acknowledge him in all of our ways. And it says that he's going to make straight our paths, right? And so, um, so, so moving on, David is at a, a point in his life where he's repented of that, that failure. He's, uh, he's decided to, to bring the, the, um, the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant in the right way, right? And so let's see what happens. Um, I've got to find my place. And so, so David's repented. They're, they're going to carry the Ark in the right way. And so let's look at verse 16 of chapter 15 together. And uh, within this verse, it says that, uh, that they have singers who played loudly on musical instruments, kind of like what we're doing tonight. They had uh, harps and lyres and cymbals. So you've got stringed instruments and drums. So, I mean, we see them in, in, in Scripture, so it's okay to have drums. It's all right. The Lord loves it. He, uh, and, and it says that they raise sounds of joy, you know, in a... It's kind of what we're doing tonight, just raising sounds of joy to our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Amen. And so, uh, so the worship team is assembled at this point, and the leaders are, are consecrated, and they're all wearing fine linen, and they are ready to go. They are like they're going in, right? They're, they've got the Ark of the Covenant, and they're they're ready to bring it in. 
And so uh, in verse 28, we see that, that they see, uh, yeah, they bring in the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders <laughs> instead of on a cart this time, uh, doing things God's way, amen, with dancing, celebrating, singing loudly with, uh, with stringed instruments, drums, and even horns, trumpets, and, and horned instruments. Um, so they've repented. They, they've, they're having a praise party, and, uh, and the Ark is placed in the tent that... Uh, that David prepared for it. And so that brings us to, to tonight's text. And so we're going to be in chapter 16. And we're just going to look at one verse tonight. But I feel like it, it just goes along so well with, with uh, tonight being a worship night. And, and uh, just that focus of like, why are we here? Why, what is our heart? What is the focus? How should we worship? And we, we can glean from uh, this, these words in verse 4. And so, uh, so let's, let's go ahead and... Um, do I have a slide for verse 4? Sweet. Okay, let's, uh, let's read that really quick together. Um, so then he appointed some of the Levites as ministers before the ark of the Lord to invoke, to thanks, uh, and to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. And so we, we see that they did three things. Uh, they, they invoked, they thanked, and they praised the Lord. Uh, so they, they were appointed to do those things um, before the Ark of the Covenant. And so let's, uh, let's take a look at some of those words. So first we have, uh, in this translation, it says invoke. And in, in the Hebrew, it's, uh, it's zakar. Can, can anyone say zakar? I know it's, it's actually, it's, it's one of those flaming, flaming words. So zakar, yeah. And so um, that means to, to remember, to recall, to call to mind. Kind of like what we were we're praying earlier. We're, we're, we're remembering the Lord. We're bringing him to the forefront of our attention. We are giving him the focus. And so that's what we're doing when we worship. We're taking time out of our weeks, busy schedules to come together and, and focus on the Lord, right? And so that just begs the, the question so many times that like we get caught up in life, like the busyness uh, of, of school, whether it be work, a career, family can be so busy. I know I've got two little ones and any little bit of time is usually like right after they go to bed. You know, that's the only time that we really have like Bethany and I to, to like hang out together with just us. No crying, no, no, no nothing, just us. Um, but like how many times do, does life give the, give the Lord a backseat? Sometimes we, we, we forget to, to be with the Lord. We forget to remember him, to meditate on him daily. And so the effect of that is like, Honestly, if we're honest, we're, we start feeling distant from God. We start feeling dry. We're doing ministry even, and we're, we're, we're like, Lord, why is this so hard? Why, why is this so... It, this yoke isn't easy. You know, but if we're abiding in Him, abiding in His love, then the fruit is coming from Him. Amen. And so, um, so remember the Lord. Recall. Call to mind. And, uh, man... And when we do that, we're, we're drawing near to the Lord. And we know that James 4 says that when we draw near to the Lord, he's faithful to do what? To draw near to us. And so that's what we're doing tonight as well. We're, we're gathering, we're drawing near to the Lord in, in song and praise. And we know, and we, we, we trust God is, God is faithful. I mean, that he is right here right now. Where two or more are gathered, he is in the midst. He's right here speaking way better to your hearts uh, than, than I ever could. And so, uh, so we're supposed to invoke or remember the Lord when we're worshiping. Uh, so the second thing we're supposed to be doing is we're supposed to, uh, we're appointed, oh, they were appointed to, to thank the Lord in their worship. Um, and the, the Hebrew word is yada. Can anyone say yada? It's a little easier. Yada. And that means to give thanks, laud, and praise. And so when we're worshiping, we, we would, uh, we should enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We should give thanks to him and bless his name, as, as Psalm 100 says. And when we sing, uh, sing songs like we just did, thank you, Jesus, for the blood, you know, applied. We sing other songs on Sundays like, I thank God, where like the lyrics kind of lead us in, those, in, in our thanksgiving. But I also believe that even when that's not going on, that we can have hearts, a heart posture of, of thanksgiving while we're praising the Lord. Um, when we're singing about his, his faithfulness, when we're singing about his, his steadfast love, with his, his patience with us, and how faithful he always is. We sing about his salvation. I mean, 
those are all things that, that we can be thankful for. Amen. Amen. So, number two, we should be giving thanks to God when we worship. And on to number three. They were appointed to praise the Lord. In, in, in chapter 16, they were appointed to praise the Lord. In the Hebrew, the word is halal. Can anyone say halal? Hello. Hey, 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 y'all. It kind of sounds like that. Um, uh, it means to, to be praised, to be made, uh, be made praiseworthy, be commended, and to, uh, and to be worthy of praise. And our God is worthy of praise. He is so worthy. He is, he is the creator of all. He, it, he holds all of creation in, in the palm of his hand. There's nothing that catches our God by surprise. He knows the end from the beginning. He's, he's a faithful father that we can run to through our great high priest, Jesus, that we can run to the throne room, that he loves us. We, we, can, we can praise him for all those things, but ultimately because he is worthy. Like we, we don't really need a reason other than he is. Therefore, he is worthy of our praise. Amen. He is. Like God doesn't owe us anything. But he gives us everything, right? He gave us his son. He gives us salvation. He gave us life and hope and joy for a future, right? And we can, pray, we can praise him through those things. We can praise the Lord because we have salvation. And so when we worship, we, we boast in the Lord. We magnify his name together. And so, um, yeah, so we magnify the name of Jesus like we've been doing, just lifting up the name of Jesus and giving glory. And I just wanted to read Philippians 2, verses 8 through 11. It just touches on, on that, on how we just give him praise. And, and, and because of what Jesus has done, like he has a name above all names. And so let's, let's read that starting in verse 8 together. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so as we conclude, the worship team is going to come on back up. We're going to finish out with a couple more songs and we can get to a, we're going to get a chance to apply these things. And so in, in conclusion, let's make these, these three things personal. Amen. So they, they, the Levites, the musicians, the, the worship leaders at the, uh, that were worshiping around, uh, ministering before the Ark of the, of the Lord, they were appointed to invoke, they were appointed to thank God, and they were appointed to praise God every day. Amen. And so today, let's make it personal. Let's say that we are appointed to invoke and remember God when we worship. We are appointed to thank God when we worship. And we are appointed to praise God when we worship. And we're going to put that into practice. And so, you guys ready to worship a little more? All right, let's, uh, let's, all, let's go on and stand together. And we're going to pray and, and we'll, we'll close out the night with a couple more songs. Just praising our King. Amen. And Father, you're worthy of all the glory, all the honor, the praise. Most right now, Lord, we, we invoke, we remember you. God, we want to put you in the forefront. You're the guest of honor. Lord, this is all for you. As we were singing, even in the first song, it's always been about you. Lord, apart from you, we can do nothing, Lord. And so right now, we want to plug into the vine. We want to run back to you. We want to sit at your feet, Lord. Your word says that we can run, enter your, your, your gates with thanksgiving and praise that we can enter your courts. So Father, we're running to you. We pray that you'd be glorified, that you'd be honored and praised. And Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit as well as we continue to, to, to magnify your name together. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So as we bring tonight to a close and sing these last few songs, just some food for thought. You know, one day, the Bible tells us, if we are born again, we get to do this in his very presence, in the presence of Jesus, face to face. 
it's it's overwhelming when you really stop and think about it. And um, I know what some of you are thinking. I can't hold a tune. I can't sing. <laughs> First of all, that's not true for some of you because I can hear you. Um, but second of all, um, you're going to be given a perfect body. So along with that means perfect voice, right? We could we could assume that. So <laughs> it's just so amazing and encouraging and overwhelming to think um, that we will do this in the with angels, with angelic beings in the very presence of God, the Father, of Jesus, the Son. Um, so we get, we get a chance right now to just get a little glimpse of what that will be like, just a small taste. Um, and we just encourage you, don't be shy. It doesn't matter what talent level you have. God doesn't care about that. All he cares about is your heart, as Brian said at the beginning of the, of the worship night. He just cares about your heart, your obedience, and just worshiping in complete abandon to him. So this is your chance tonight, church, to just lay it, lay it all at his feet, anything going on in the world that is weighing on your mind, anything going on in your life that is weighing on your mind, let that all out and worship to Christ. Amen. So join my voice.
my God reigns. But we've got one more song for you guys, and, and let's go out with a bang. Let's let's worship the Lord together.
Excited to do that. You guys want one more? Want one more? But we can do one more. <laughs> Alright, let's uh let's throw it up Fern Foundation. <laughs> that one's newer. I, I know it pretty good, but not enough not to not to have the, the chords and the lyrics. What about uh here let's celebrate. Um can we throw a key on in, in the key of C, uh, a pad? All right. All right, let's celebrate. How about glorious day? Yeah. All right. All right, here we go. You guys know it? You good? You guys know it? You good? All right, let's celebrate. the quarter note clap. <laughs> 